Uh, good evening, everybody. Uh, thank you for joining us tonight. Um, tonight, we have a very, very dynamic young person who is making waves across the, <laughs> the continent, uh, Mr. Mulhen Dolane, who is also the founder of Asante Solutions. Uh, so, Mulhen, welcome to Tech Tuesday with Garabo Mahakane. Ah, thank you. Thank you for a warm welcome. Greetings to everyone who can hear the sound of my voice and see me right now. Okay. Uh, okay. Um, obviously, I have done my, you know, I and I was super impressed by you and what you have been able to achieve. But yeah. for somebody who does not know who Mushen Dolani is, who is Mushen Dolani? Yo, um, is 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 a, a young boy from Pochepston. That's where I was born and bred, Pochepston, and I moved into um, Adam's Mission. This is in Devon. I'm KZN, and that is where I advanced. I, I did my high school. I was in a boarding school. Uh, that's where I was a little bit more shaped because I was exposed into different types of kids, people that are coming from different types of backgrounds. Um, even the, the LSMs that we're coming from were different. Um, so unfortunately, I wouldn't say I'm coming from a poor family, no, um, but it, it wasn't wealthy at um, um, neither. So everything was on a budget, extremely tight budget. Um, so, and then you would get to live with kids that, uh, Budget isn't really not a problem, you see. So um, that uh, it it really um taught me a lot about um life perseverance itself and just uh, taking people as they are because uh, we were all young. Um, we all had our own interest and 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 the wants and needs from our parents. Um, but we were all here for a common thing. So, and we were all given the same equal opportunities and rights. And it was just a matter of how does one capitalize on those opportunities. So I was, I was, I was a, a, a soccer player. Uh, I remember when I was doing my <laughs> my grade 11, uh, my parents couldn't afford to pay for me anymore in, in, in high school. And it's soccer that actually saved me because I was playing for an academy that I was um outside of the boarding house adams college and i got a place to stay um lesser than i would have been paying when i was in a boarding school obviously um but i was getting all the benefits that i would have been getting um if i was still in a boarding school and more i should mention that so it was a blessing in disgust if i would put it but it exposed me to a greater life beyond um high school while i was still in high school you see and fast forward that is when i got um, the very first taste of business um, because um, I and Clara and I who decided to, um, she's going to take me in and um, you know she she was she was entrepreneur entrepreneurial at heart and she exposed us into all of these um, different um, 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 avenues like for instance I mean, the first business I got engaged in was selling t-shirts like get t-shirts brand them and then sell them to colleagues you know um but while i was still in high school as well that is when i was also um introduced into um graphic design my big brother was an, is an architect and is the one who tasked me to play with photoshop and uh, just uh, finish off his work and his designs you see um and from there there was like i like this thing and i want to learn more and then that was when i was like I'm going to study um, anything that has to do with computers, anything that has to do with creating something new using a computer, you know. That is when I was like, um, I'm sold into um, the roots of um, using technology as, as a tool to manipulate things that exist and create things that don't exist at all. So looking into the future, it even shaped the whole mindset. Fast forward, moved into varsity. Um, that's where a lot of things got really advanced, you know. Um, but yeah. I wanted to do computer science. And fortunately, my maths was 2% short uh, for me to make it into that class uh, again. So that is when I was like referred to take information systems so that I can change the second semester and go study um, the, the computer science I wanted on the second semester. I like, man, if I'm in, I'm in. You know, and then I was in six months past. Now it's time to jump the ship. I'm like, nope. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, I'm in the right place. You know, I, I felt like I was in the right place. It's because <clears throat> while I was still in high school, 
I was working during holidays. Um, mm-hmm. I was working at a retail store. And me working there, it was it, it, it exposed me into a working environment and I got to understand, I got to be exposed in different types of characters. Mm-hmm. I'm still young, I'm not fully understanding all of these things, but I'm already being exposed into them, you see. Mm-hmm. So when I was getting into class and studying about management, studying about economics, I was not consuming um, theory as it is, but this was theory that was coming in after getting some practicality. I was like, oh, it makes sense. Whenever my manager was saying this thing, I was like, oh, okay, okay, okay. And when I was in class for entrepreneurship, I was already mm-hmm. one of in high school involved in different prisons. I remember I used to sell hot dogs and this is Gila Erenk. Food Erenk. I used to sell those things. I mean, I, I just liked the idea of, of being busy. And it was not like I'm working for money or whatever. It's just something that was keeping me busy um, whenever I'm back from boarding house, you know. So those things, um, when I got into varsity and the lectures we were teaching, to me, it was more theory after practical, not like I was getting theory, then I had to go and get the practical side of things. So uh, it's it made my whole university or my uh, um, involvement in the Bachelor of Commerce and Information Systems more befitting and aligning. It was like, this is the one, this is what I want to do, you know. So uh, th- that's how I dumped computer science. And I'm happy. Ask me if, if I would do it again. Nope. <laughs> 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 Yeah. I mean, you, you've had an incredible journey, um, you know, and you were mentioning the impact that your brother had on you being exposed to, you know, design and, you know, and creation. Um, what would, um, how has that, you know, that whole, um, you know, that exposure and your studies actually aligned you, as you said, to actually starting Asante Solutions? It's 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 aligned very well, you know. I was <clears throat> that I was not busy, but I was pretty much pre um I'm involved in so many different things. Uh, when I got into varsity, uh, I wanted because he said to me, "I can't go for graphic design," uh, because I can't draw <laughs> using my head. Okay. <laughs> it's uh-huh. not sense. But now I'm like, hey, this guy is saying I can't go and. I mean, I want this thing. I'm passionate about this thing. So I took it upon myself to study graphic design online. So mm-hmm. while I was in university doing what I was doing, I would go into the computer land. I remember because I didn't have a computer. Spend like an, the whole night until about well, 3 a.m. studying graphic design online. There's some. There's a concept called MOOCs, Massive Open Online Courses. That is what mm-hmm. I'm equipped me so that and uh, and the practical and the passion to create things and now me being inv- involved in different clubs and societies uh, it's it's it, it shaped my thinking because i was already um, involved in creating solutions for other people um at a at a very early stage um i was part of an organization called inactus uh, of which is an international organization that is about um social entrepreneurship um mm-hmm. in different um, institutions so the work we were doing there um was just saying you have to have your own business without saying that you understand mm-hmm. and me just owning up to every responsibility that i have and converting it into what i'm mostly passionate about and putting it into and practice as a business. So, yeah. Wow. Um, I love that you're also part of Inectus because at some point they were running, um, uh, just before COVID, they used to go to universities and make sure that every winter holidays, like right now, there would be um, uh, what they call hackathons, you know, and actually try and exploit that. And you were part of that, you know, in, in, in KZN. Um, do you believe that we need more, um, I would say maybe, um, how would I, would, do we need such hubs in universities and even in high schools to a large extent to, you know, to unlock that potential within young people? Definitely. I am 100% in um, and for the, for, 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 for the right that we definitely need these things. We definitely need these platforms. We definitely need 
such programs that are going to cultivate the culture of independent thinking, entrepreneurial spirits, and just turning challenges or problems into solutions. Not even tasked to do it. Like your mindset, be in a state where never it's experiencing a challenge. It's by default, it's coming up with a solution. So being a solution-driven um, 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 person is not something that we are all born with, but mm -hmm. through exposure and experiences, it's something that we all can adopt and live with. So I best believe these platforms are important as early as primary even, not even high mm -hmm. school, as early as primary. Um, kids in primary school are young, are fresh, and they are able to adopt mindsets. And if they can adopt those mindsets at such an earlier stage, that would be um, a, 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 a huge shift in the way society actually executes things and get involved with things. So I best believe that um, such programs are very important. I am a proud product of such programs, you know. And if I were to um, just reflect back honestly into my life, my opportunities that I've got, the experiences. A huge portion of it is because I was part of Inactus. Mm -hmm. It's really, it's really propelled me um, to be who I am. And the institution I was coming from, UKZN, you know, UKZN cultivates the culture of entrepreneurship like crazy. And mm -hmm. you get access into platforms that if you were just to be a typical student, you wouldn't get, you understand? So I, I, I got to engage with management while I was still a student and that um, elevated my way of thinking and that introduced me to opportunities I never thought that i qualify for. That's put me on boardrooms that I never thought I would actually sit while I was still a student, you see? And not that the management was feeling petty um, for us, no. Because we were engaging in real um, situations, real problems, and proposing something that is going to definitely add value into the institution. And mm -hmm. UKZN has really, really given us opportunity, me especially, and other fellow um, people that have been with um, thousands of opportunities that I wouldn't have got if I was not part of such organizations or platforms or, or interventions that are there to just shape up how one thinks and because it's exposed me to who I am earlier and if mm -hmm. this was not my roots it was also going to expose me that chief find something new <laughs> <laughs> um you know your life is like um how do I say it it's been a series of you getting to your um to your papers to you know it's like a series of you are in soccer, but then you are aligned. You meet somebody who teaches you about, you know, um, entrepreneurship. You have a brother who exposes you to another world altogether. And you go into a university that also says you are in the right place. You are just living out your purpose. Um, and you said something about, you know, being exposed to things at an earlier stage. Um, you are part of the Forbes, uh, um, Forbes 30 under 30 yeah. uh, for 2022. How did that come about? Because the, there's, yeah, there's a, there's a list of criteria to meet <laughs> and you met them and, you know, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah look, making it to the Forbes um, um, 30 under 30 list is, is something that is very prestige to me. Um, it's very huge to our organization and it is really a testament that the work we've been doing with my team um, is definitely in the right direction um, that is going to positively add value, contribute and propel how we do things here in Africa and, and, and put our digital economy um, at a very uh, advanced uh, position or level, you see. So I was excited about it. I was happy. Um, but when it's actually, I am excited, I'm happy. But when it's actually happened, um, when I got the news that, uh, welcome to the Forbes Africa family, I was so overwhelmed with feelings. Um, because I think... Uh, uh, 
running a digital agency means that every week in and out there's something going on and a lot is going on you see so um it was one of those weeks and i'm at the office i'm seeing the email like hmm? this might not be it by the time i'll tell the team they're gonna be disturbed so i'm like <laughs> okay i'm just gonna go ahead and get some fresh air took a screenshot <laughs> to very close people was like look guess what we made it <laughs> by the time i came i talked back to you but still i was still in disbelief um but mm-hmm. i i knew that um we, we we stand good potential the application was very strong but it was also an exercise from ourselves as a sense of solutions that hey we've put in the work um we've done the work let's see if the work that we've we've done is is, is 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 on what level, and guess what? The work that we've done is recognizable on the Forbes Africa thirty under thirty level. So um, the team worked really hard. Um, I have very close people that really believe that um, um, my strides or what I've done um, could actually um, be um, recognizable on such a on such a level. Um, I can even count names, you know. Uh, like for instance, Kuli Lendo worked directly on putting in the application. I have the team moment at the office, uh, pulling in great work. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm Sizi, where Dandogazi, the team um, from partners that we are working with. It has been just a collective uh, effort to work around making sure that when organizations humongously as Forbes Africa um, put in our work into scrutiny, uh, it's really on that level. So that rigorous process um, was, was tight, was hectic, a lot of things they looked into, but we made it through. So yeah. Yeah. Um, I love that, that you, you put in the work. And does this mean now um, Asante Solutions, because it is a digital agency, it is now, is it, um, are their services are available across Africa from Cape to Cairo? Are your services now available? Because it is a digital agency after all. Yeah, um, yeah. Uh, our offering is international, not only Africa. Okay. Our, our offering is international. Beginning of the year, we onboarded our first international client, headquartered in France, and we've been doing some amazing work with them. Um, we've been doing some amazing work with them. Um, recently, we've been running a global summit for them, bringing in different countries um, in, in Paris and putting in all the marketing efforts, the look and feel of the whole event um, curated in our small office. And it's 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 it, 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 it's been a great exposure, um, but our services is definitely available across um, other countries. It's just that we haven't really onboarded clients in these spaces, but we are working towards doing that. We are channeling uh, or we are opening up our doors to companies that want to grow, companies that want to capitalize on the digital space, companies that are willing to be the pioneers of change in their industry. Those are the companies we want to partner up with and those are the companies we want to propel for their businesses to thrive. Okay. Um, yes, it would be very nice when you know you land maybe in, uh, in, um, in Kenya, in Nairobi, and you see that you know something has been done by Asante Solutions. It would be a nice play also on the, on the word Asante. Uh, <laughs> And oh, sorry. Yeah, on, you know, <laughs> and you know, and it would it would really, really hold well. And I hope that you actually manage to actually, you know, onboard more clients, more so from the continent, because we know that our digital economy and our digital knowledge in the continent is lagging behind. And to have you know agencies like yours would actually change, you know, and, and actually digitize more companies oh. in the future. Um, earlier on, you mentioned the digital economy yeah. and, you know, <clears throat> how you'd want to increase that or how would you want the space, how you'd want to revolutionize the space. How do you see Asante specifically changing our digital economy as the Southern Africa and Africa as a whole? Yeah, look, 
with the work that we are doing so far, I feel like we haven't even scratched the surface. Um, we are proud to have some really um, great clients. Uh, UKZN um, is one client that I can use as a case study on how we've been um, shape-shifting things. And they've had a very um, big campaign on graduation that we also um, involved in part of the whole um, African um, story uh, curation with it. And now you look into this thing as <clears throat> content, because purely in essence, that's what people consume in the digital spaces, it's content. Mm -hmm. But now um, when you start to think around monetization of content, that now opens up a bigger and broader scope, you see. So like for instance, when we created that campaign, we knew exactly that um, the success of it is gonna indirectly contribute towards the number of people who would want to be part of the organization itself. You see, so now that's a dollar saved towards marketing through investment in one campaign so that the next campaign could ride on that wave, you see. And mm -hmm. then now there's that, that creates opportunity for the organization itself to remain relevant in that space, to create more opportunities for content creators, if I can put it in a sense. Mm -hmm. And the whole, the, whole, the, whole, the whole idea of content creators um, well, we call them um, influencers, is, 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 is a market on its own. It's a market that is um, um, growing, extremely growing, because people um, buy into people. You know, people are not machines. Um, and you can use whatever level of technology. People still want to connect with the next human being, you see. So it, 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 it helps brands to find people that are going to amplify the message that their brand stands for. So as a sense of vision, our positioning now comes in understanding the digital landscape and understanding the true meaning behind brands and their businesses. And then we assist them to curate um, stories, curate um, brand positioning and implement systems that are going to assist them to leverage on the digital economy that actually exists. Uh, because what you offer must be directly proportional to what you will get. So the return on investment is very big. So all the strategies and the techniques that we get to implement are actually conceptualized around that whole thing that, okay, the brand has been existing for so long. How do we tap into the digital spaces now to have an extra stream of revenue? How does this create opportunities for so many other individuals to actually benefit from pushing this brand? And only to find out that using individual um, content creators, for instance, is way less expensive than it would have been to put in a billboard. Now, a billboard mm -hmm. can be sent by 1 million people, but in a case where 100,000 people um, can reach out to their close friends, imagine the likelihood of conversion in there. So it's shape-shifting the way of thinking even for these brands that we get to um, um, work with. And when you get into this space, the digital economy is big and it is for everyone. Um, it is for everyone. Yeah. You, you, you mentioned one of your clients, which is UKZN, and I love that you're mentioning it in the graduation ceremony, because literally we look forward to the, you know, UKZN graduation ceremonies every year, because one, they're very authentic, and obviously that's not staged. But this year specifically, there was that young man who, you know, who broke down in tears and ended up with a job at the end of the, the whole process which was a very, very authentic, I don't know how to even, yeah. And all of us can literally relate. And when you say UKZN, I would say most of us for this year, that was the most outstanding thing besides everything else that we remember about UKZN. Um, how can we then now use such a platform to onboard even young, more young people and expose that talent using the, the you know, uh, the, the content that you're currently even pushing out and such content that becomes so memorable. Yeah, look, uh, here's something about UKZN. Firstly, the, the, the tagline uh, or motto for UKZN is inspiring greatness. Mm -hmm. And everything draws back into it. Everything that is about to be done and whenever we're engaging on a campaign is that how are we going to inspire greatness? How are we going to inspire the next person to be the best version of themselves 
with what we have and the limited resources that we might be granted at that particular point in time. So the campaign for UKZ is very intentional on inspiring everyone who gets to come across it to want to be part of the whole educational journey. We were intentional about instilling pride on the parents that sends their kids into university. Even if we, hadn't, we didn't go to university, we were intentional to instill that pride that um, we're not going to go or do it in a, in, a, in, in, in a Eurocentric way because that's where the whole type of graduation is actually stemming from. But we're going to African uh, put in an African context into it. We're going to create room for people to celebrate themselves. And that is one thing that UKZN has been very intentional um, um, about. The management um, never actually um, stopped um, um, the celebration at any point. There are comments there and there that it's wasting time and everything, but everything mm -hmm. was intentionally planned um, to be a platform where people could embrace themselves in, you know. And the team was big. It was not only us who were there. Um, there were uh, media liars and people that were there on time to actually send out um, certain type of information to different platforms and there were people that were doing the live streaming. So it was a, it, it was a fully fledged dynamic bomb squad basically, to do the bottom line of inspiring the whole um, world around the whole pride in, in people being themselves. So how can such platforms be um, utilized to benefit people? One, we're putting in the work to make people to know that education is very important. Mm -hmm. And in different forms, formally or informally, education is very important important but two people must never forget where they're coming from people must have pride on who they are because if you can find if you can be proud about where you're coming from and who you are you've already found strength in yourself that's the first thing for starters and then now to creatively think on how you can unlock the next level it becomes easier because you are not a, you are not trying to find yourself you've already found yourself so such platforms are there uh, or such campaigns are being curated to inspire um, more than anything that it it, it, it it, it has to do and just demonstrate that even the one kid that comes from the deepest deepest rurals can get into higher institution of learning and graduate. And you see the story um, that actually um, went viral um, um, that day um, is another testament um, that mm -hmm. actually happened. It was captured in the right moment um, uh, when we did the analytics and we, we spotted the traffic that was actually happening. And we're like, okay, these numbers are great. And then the media license team was like, okay, Let's check this out. You know, it was it was it was a whole team effort, but with the true meaning that was of intention to inspire greatness and the inspiration that people got made the 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 the, the student to also be blessed um, 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 in their struggles, mm -hmm. also be blessed in their troubles because that's how proud they were when they were at stage and their situation was of significance. South Africa wanted to contribute, so yeah. That is so amazing. Um, and, and thank you. So that we also understand, you know, there's been a fight, I'd say specifically on Twitter on, you know, if content, as you said that um, earlier on, you mentioned that, you know, um, influencers or, or content contributors, this is a market that is growing, but there has been that fight or misunderstanding of this. How can Asante help Karabo who wants to become an influencer, for instance? Um, you know, and, 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 you know, drive some form of content. Um, yeah. So firstly, uh, this must be straight. Content is king nowadays, mm. but context is queen. What that means is that we can all put in content, content out there and everyone can say they want to create content and everyone wants to get um, opportunities to create content for big brands and what's not. But what is the context of it, of which is the queen that brands are actually looking for? So what we're we doing tonight, Asante, our customers or our clients are not um, individuals um, that are creating content and everything. We, our clients are businesses so if, if an individual is, is deciding to create um, 
is create, to create a, a personal brand. So they would treat them as a personal brand, but not just for the sake of creating content for different companies. No, they, and, and, and primarily those are not um, the ones that we are targeting. We're targeting people that want to amplify their story or amplify their businesses, create demand for themselves or increase value um, for their brand or personal brand, you know? And then what we do is that the brands that we work with or the companies that we work with, because now we've invested efforts and energy to make them understand the importance of connecting with their own people, um, having the right systems in place to maximize or optimize their business. We then create opportunities, working with these brands, create opportunities for almost anyone whose content context aligns with what we are actually um, working on. So um, different campaigns uh, uh, need that. And the brands that we work with, um, they now are really maximizing on that. It's all about optimization. It's all about optimizations. And the, system, the business systems that we get to um, implement to measure all the data insights, the metrics that on how things are happening in the digital platforms, not only on social media. Mm -hmm. Our involvement starts from websites, uh, um, um, Google Ads, you know, and we bring everything together into a one dashboard for our bed's eye view management to give very key and crucial information to make the right decision at the right moment. Um, you know, um, two things you're mentioning now um, and something that you, you've been talking about, connecting people with people. And you are a digital company. Somebody would assume that because it's, you're a digital agency, you know, the whole impact of people connecting with people would be lessened. Um, why is the people meeting people so important in a digital agency? Because everything that so far you've mentioned, it has been that appeal yeah. to the audience, you know, to people. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, when we looked into this with the team, it was like, what we're doing is primarily digital transformation. We're just going to transform from traditional way of doing things into digital ways of doing things. But we... We understood that technology is just a tool and it ends there. It's just a tool to achieve certain means that you're trying to achieve. So it's reversed our thing like, wait a minute. We understand the buzzwords, the hype around technology and everything. But what are we really trying to do? Remember, I come from a high impact um, um, background. It's always been about impacting communities um, in a sustainable way. So I think those are the, are the very same um, um, values we share within the team. So that is how uh, the, 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 the shift or the different perspective actually comes in that we can bring in all the digital tools that we want, bring in all the technology that we want, but that technology is just a mere technology if it's not serving humanity um, it, in its entirety. The companies that exist today, they exist to serve people. People need businesses or need to buy something or need to engage with something to feel good, to look good, to be healthy. Um, it's either it's an experience, you want to go watch a movie. It's either you want to have something that is nice. It's either you want to go and travel. You need that for yourself. And where you're going to get it, you're going to get it from a business that is actually offering that. That's where we come in. We come in in that center on how do we connect the two. And you can never think about these people I'm reaching. This is a human who needs something to fulfill themselves. You wake up every morning um, to go to work or to do whatever that you want to do to, to fulfill a certain part of yourself. We are engaging today and anyone who's listening to this content is so that they could actually um, have different perspectives about it. Everyone has an interest. And where do you meet that interest matters the most. So that is why um, humanity is at the center of all the digitization that we do. And then now, would you then consider Asante to be a, a social enterprise? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> um, look, I think, I think we, look, I come from 
Okay, let me let me take let me take you back a bit. <laughs> let me take you back a bit. Why Asante is not a social enterprise? So I, I understand that very clearly. I've been delegated to represent South Africa in Bangladesh. Um, Bangladesh is a hub of social enterprise or social business. Um, I got to learn directly from Prof- Professor Mohammed Yanus, who's a Nobel Prize um, winner, and they were exposing us into the whole. Con, um, um, concept of social enterprise and then there's Grameen mm-hmm. Bank they found a, a bank on the principles of social enterprise and social enterprise at essence of it is about uh, uh, creating sustainable opportunities for those people um, it, it, it's a huge concept so I don't want to even miss sell it people should actually look, at, mm-hmm. look into it um, I'm very deeply but what we're doing at Asante is not on the principles or the philosophy of of social business or social enterprise no it's not at all ours is a, a, a is is a principle of humanity um getting what it wants that is our bottom line is that <laughs> as our client meets their bottom line and objectives and in them doing that does it fulfill um the needs of the society because for them to stay relevant a, 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 they need to deliver on the needs and the expectations of the clients. While on social enterprise, it's a little bit the other way around. You yeah, understand? It's mm-hmm. about creating these jobs um, for these people to sustain themselves. You yeah, understand? Mm-hmm. And it can grow bigger, bigger, bigger in that. And then the social enterprise itself becomes a business. We are the ones that are dealing with the business that is actually doing the social enterprise work. So it's a little bit, very fine line. Uh, but I'm happy <laughs> to push further on it if um, there's, there's clarity seeking that needs to be there. So, yeah. Um, I think you might also be coining something new on the humanity enterprise. You know, humanity needs enterprise because it's 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 completely different from capitalism. You know, and yeah. you know, and and it's not necessarily a social enterprise. It's somewhere in between. So you might be coining something different for Let's the. Let's take that score now. Start my PhD. Eh? <laughs> you know, <laughs> this could be something. You know, it, it it's something worth exploring. Because even if we, we look at, um, you know, the platform that we're using right now, which is Facebook, um, initially it was seen as a social enterprise. But if you look at how it has transformed in the past 10 years, it yeah. falls under what you've just described right now. So yeah. there is space for this yeah. to be explored. As, as, as an idea. But also yeah. I want you to tell us exactly besides, um, you know, making, you know, brands connect with humans. What else does Asante do? So to simplify what Asante does, we explain ourselves as a hybrid between digital marketing and technology services. So what that means is that when we get involved with a client or a brand, we are either one, increasing their demand so that they can make more business, um, or two, we are increasing their brand value so that they could um, be experts in their space and later on convert that into whatever conversion that they want to do. And then us being more involved in doing all this thing, that is when the technology part, of which is my background, strong background on mapping out things, connecting things in terms of using the digital space and that. We now implement or develop systems that are going to assist these organizations or companies to manage the demand that has been created or the, 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 the brand increase that has been done. So we're talking implementing systems that are going to, let's say an enterprise um, relation um, planning system or a customer relation management. Typical example, we have a client in the um, property space called Daba Holdings. A very big client, anyone wants to buy property should definitely check them out. They're developing an estate in San Francis, um, a hundred units estate. Um, they are also going to be starting development here in Deben, developing a complex of 100 units um, um, complex uh, and selling off plan. They are all selling off plan. But now it was a matter of, we can do marketing, sure. Um, we can um, um, spread the word, sure. Uh, that can happen. But 
there's huge money that needs to be invested here. A person minimum coughing in 850,000 into buying um, um, your units or even in millions there in San Francisco on the estate that is being developed. How does the sales agent find the right people to actually buy? You understand? Mm -hmm. um, that is all happening during the period of COVID. No one is allowed to meet or everything. So mini meeting with each other is very minimized. Mm -hmm. So we can get the marketing right. Anyone can do that. Okay, maybe not anyone, but that bottom line done. But how do you manage it? That is when we're implementing a system that is going to be a lead management system that, oh, Kara was interested in buying a property in um, San Francisco or in Avoca, Deben. <laughs> But Karabo won't pay this money until someone speaks to them. But now this someone needs, the sales agent needs to speak with hundreds of these people who are saying they are interested and tell them how the whole process is going to be like for them to be sold. So the system assists for a human or our sales agents to actually dump information on the system. Say, oh, we give them the data, a lead, this is Karabo. Um, Karabo is interested in buying one unit and they stay here. This is, the, this is all the information about themselves. They reach out. It's either we're using an automated system that is going to send a, 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 an automated email. That email already has a personalization on it. It's calling you by name. Um, it's telling you all the details that are relevant to what you've actually put in there. And by the time you are taking a certain action, the system is actually tracking what move um, you are actually doing so that the next decision or the next action that is going to be taken is going to be influenced by you. We call them triggers, you understand? By the time you are connecting with one of the agents, they know almost everything about you. They know what you are interested with. And it's not like they're trying to sell it to you. They're just trying to share more information with you because as much as they want to make sales, but this is property, lifetime mm -hmm. investment, you know? And the guys that are holding what they are doing um, with um, bringing in first-time buyers in the property market um, is really amazing. And with the systems and the ways that we've been doing it, um, it has been really um, instrumental. And we even connected everything into WhatsApp because we understood that where everyone actually plays and interacts. So now it's not a matter that they need to reach out. A person gets on social media and then they see it, they click and then they're on WhatsApp or read and then there's an auto response that is giving everything and then they are speaking with a human, you know, and they're just good with um, um, conversion. Uh, that's something you can never take away, take away with them because at the essence of what they are doing is because they want to empower the next person. So that's, that's a practical case study of some of the things that we are actually doing. But fortunate enough, as of lately, we are involved with Accenture. Um, Accenture is a global company um, that is um, doing big consultations to do business development and transformation of big corporate company. Understanding that we are still a, 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 an SME, um, getting an advantage um, to learn from them, being mentored or, 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 or getting opportunities directly from them is going to expose us into a more broader network than we are actually are. And the systems that are, are being used there, Microsoft 360, SAP, um, 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 Power BI, uh, they are systems that you cannot just use on a small organization, but use on a bigger organization. Now, we know the technology, but... The clients that we've been serving, some of them do not have the budget. So now we'll be playing in more, more in that space. So it's not that sophisticated. Simplify mm -hmm. it is our transformation. So that's what we do. Um, I, you know, one thing that you have been mentioning is a lot of analytics, number one. And something, you know, um, as you were speaking, especially on Dandaba, as your client, I must say that every single one of your clients, you know them personally and you are passionate and it seems, I don't know if that's how you curate your, your clients. It's something that you believe in because now I'm gonna go look at Ndaba because, you know, trying to figure out who are they now because of something that you have said. And yeah. it's a beautiful thing for you to actually be this passionate even about your clients. But with the analytics, um, I'm thinking of a big um, sales thing that we we, um, we use in South Africa where we just go and click, but it doesn't really reveal a lot about the people that make clicks. Um, I don't know if I should, Property24, it says I clicked, I viewed, I spent a few minutes on it, but it doesn't reveal more about me as a person 
or my personal taste, or even that if I can even afford it, because Garabo will go and click on a 45 million rand house, knowing very well that she does not afford it. But it shows if it gives you analytics, the you yeah. know the basic analytics, it will say that 30 yeah. people clicked, but not necessarily yeah. matching it. And you're mentioning on the matching part to say, yeah. am I the right client? Yeah. And um how did you get to that point where you're saying that we want proper, you know, leads and proper analytics on these clients? Yeah. Um, look, our client uh, knew what they want. It's just that they didn't have maybe let's say the time or the means to actually do it. We knew the technology. It's just that they didn't know where it should be used. Mm-hmm. And that's that's where the balance starts to strike right now. So there's something called um, a buyer persona that we first develop before we launch a new um, campaign. They're going to tell us everything about their carabo that they envision. And our job is that when we launch the campaign, we are targeting carabo um, and anything that fills in the scope of carabo. Um, as we've defined them on the buyer persona, you see. So what then happens after that is that we need to know where do these garabos play? Um, what do they do? What do they like? What do they prefer? What is their platform? So you might have seen that whenever you are on the internet or you're getting on websites, there's something called cookies. Yes. <laughs> yes. Those cookies... That's where data is actually collected for these individual websites. But all of these individual websites, they're all listed on Google. Google is the search engine for the world. Mm. So if Karabo has access to internet and they sometimes Google something, then we have all the information. We can be in the face of Karabo when we want to be in the face of Karabo. It's not data privacy um, invasion or what's not. Mm -hmm. gave permission that I'm interested that internet, you Google, you people of the internet, help me to find what is of interest to me. And then we will be on interest to you 6 a.m. in the morning when you slide on your phone. (laughs) Here we are. (laughs) But that is what we do. Another thing is that there's a client called, uh, we have Mangwanani um, Spa, African Spa. Yes. Um, we've, we've recently onboarded them and we're still doing a lot of studying on what they are doing and we are developing a new website for them and that has been what you actually are actually asking there has been one thing about them because now this is spa and wellness relaxation massages but how are they doing it as an African spa is very different and very unique of which it diversify their markets and their audience so the first thing that we had to get before we do anything, I was like, who's buying into these things anyway mm-hmm. at this point in time? We plugged in our system, we milk all the data, and then we're like, flip, 90% females are the ones who are making a purchasing decision. Mm-hmm. Like, okay, females really like soft life. Uh, <laughs> cool, cool, cool. But when we <laughs> looked in deep, who are they buying it for? Oh, this is a couple thing. It's the female mm-hmm. that decision so that mm-hmm. means that so that the gent doesn't say no we must also target the chances way so that we can strike the balance because the first the, the lady is going to be the first person to do that the whole thing so now this the, the, the how we are actually developing the the whole landscape of their digital touch points is going to be grouping everyone in and it's going to be the right people because we know um, where they play. We know where they are. They are already, and it's going to be tapping into the new different markets that we're going to be doing. And well, apart from the good marketing that we're going to be implementing, um, uh, we, or we are implementing, their service is just amazing. It's a unique African spy experience when you get there. So we know you get there once, once. <laughs> you want to come every day. <laughs> <laughs> I must say, um, you you have very very a, a, a wide array of yeah diversified clients. Because as you are talking, as you are speaking, there I'm like, yeah, it's been a while. I might need a, a calabash massage. It's been a while, you know. <laughs> instead, of, <laughs> instead of the Thai massage, 
Um, as we are going towards wrapping up, I'm, I'm actually enjoying our conversation and I do know that we will have another conversation. But what is the one thing that you want businesses? Because you are about, you know, the business of the business you know, connecting the business with the people. What do you want, especially small, medium enterprises to know and the services that you can also provide as a Sante Solutions to those small, medium enterprises? And also obviously the big ones, um, you know, what do you want us to know uh, with his small, you know, company and, you know, how it can benefit from Asante Solutions? One, um tap into the online space, create your digital presence, website, social media, it must be there. Even if you are not fully active on them, it's fine, but it must be there. Two, consistency in your brand. The look and feel from Facebook, um, Instagram, wherever, the look and feel, we must be able to strike similarities that, oh, these are babies from the same stomach, you understand? Mm -hmm. Um, three, hey, don't try and do everything that is under the sun. Um, a little bit channel um, your focus. Um, four, understand the fact that sometimes we get opportunities that might not be of what you've actually defined that you want to do. That's an opportunity for collaboration. Don't be greedy. <laughs> That's an opportunity for collaboration. Don't be greedy. So that could be the general scope of my points that I can sum up that um, fellow SMEs should definitely consider. But what they can get um, from Asante Solutions uh, is that uh, in any case we get involved with your business is, is, uh, is, is, is of greater value. We, we don't want to see uh, the businesses we get involved with losing. So we invest our all to make sure that they <clears throat> unlock the next level of their brand. Um, our, our brand development process is like is giving life into something that doesn't exist. Um, a logo development or the brand identity development can take us one night or it can take us two weeks. It depends on how heavy the spiritual or the, the, the brand um, it is, it, it can be, or how aligned things could possibly be, you know. Um, but we have a very great team, you understand, um, that, 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 that has a wealth of knowledge um, into um, getting these things done. So that could be another um, um, benefit um, when people um, get involved with what we are doing or working with us at Asante Solutions. As long as they can pay the price. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much for this conversation. Um, we we laughed, we sang, you know, yeah. everything under the sun, but Thank you very much for this conversation and we will be having you soon again because there is so much we still need to explore, especially on the data analytics side of things so that everybody understands that once Kara puts up a post, you know, it says something about Kara and then adding on cookies, you can select which yeah. ones you don't want, which ones you want. But for, for now, thank you very much for this conversation. Thank you very much for the opportunity and the invitation to bring me here. I highly appreciate it. Um, it's been a great one, a great host. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you everyone, to everyone also who's watching this thing. And thanks to everyone who's been behind who I am today. I, I, I highly value such um, investment into uh, my brand. Thanks.